legend has it that a Hazrat Shah Janab Allah Maktabi went on a pilgrimage to Mecca in the 16th century and during that journey stopped in a city in Yemen and I'll tell you its name shortly and drank a refreshing beverage that seemed to keep him awake and sharp. But the city authorities had very strict rules that banned anyone from taking the seed from which that drink was made outside their territory. They only let you take the roasted beans that will not germinate. But this enterprising gentleman strapped them to his chest, hid them in his hair and his clothes and managed to smuggle them out and went on to plant them in Chikmagalur, Karnataka. That is the origin story for how coffee reached India. The man was better known by his Sufi name, Baba Buddha. And that port city in Yemen, he managed to smuggle the beans out of mocha. Now, all of you have seen the word mocha in your favorite coffee shop. You've also seen espresso, cappuccino, filter coffee, java, flat white, or cold brew. If you're a hardcore coffee enthusiast, this is not a video for you. I'd suggest you watch the brilliant James Hoffman. But if you're someone who drinks coffee once in a while, but is curious about all these complicated terms and also want to understand coffee's effect on your body, watch this video. Coffee is the third most consumed beverage in the world after water and tea. It is enjoyed around the world in different ways, instant or ground and brewed, hot or cold, black or with milk, with or without sugar, espresso to creamy lattes, flavored with syrups and spices, and in Brazil, mixed with tea. Coffee comes from a fruit, the fruit of the coffea species, often called coffee cherries or berries. There are two varieties that are most commonly used for making coffee, Arabica and Robusta. Arabica is known for its smooth, complex flavor profile that can range from sweet and fruity to sharp and tangy. It's milder in flavor and is the preferred choice for high-end coffee markets. Arabica beans are predominantly grown in South and Central America, East Africa, and Asia at higher altitudes, which contributes to the bean's development of a richer flavor. The plant is more sensitive to the environment, requiring specific climatic conditions to thrive, making it more vulnerable to diseases like coffee leaf rust. Robusta, on the other hand, has a stronger, more robust flavor with a grainy essence and a nutty aftertaste. It contains nearly double the caffeine content of Arabica, which makes it more bitter, but also provides the plant with greater resistance to diseases and pests. This makes Robusta easier and cheaper to cultivate, so it's used in instant coffee products. Robusta beans are primarily grown in the Eastern Hemisphere, particularly in Africa and Indonesia. Due to its hardy nature, Robusta can be cultivated at lower altitudes and in a variety of climatic conditions. The fruit generally has two beans inside it. These beans are separated from the mucilage surrounding the beans, processed, dried, and this gives you green beans. We normally do not consume fresh green coffee, but this has not stopped health influencers from claiming that it helps with weight loss. But unfortunately, there is no evidence. On a side note, health influencers will tell you everything other than the one method of weight loss that actually works, which is eat less food daily. But let's get back to coffee. At this point, the green beans have no aromas or flavors of coffee as we know it. Then the beans are roasted. During the roasting process, a lot of chemical reactions take place, like the Maillard reaction and caramelization. Now the coffee will taste and smell like coffee. How much or how long you roast will determine the nature of the flavor. Light roasted coffee has milder, more fruity and sour flavors. Dark roast has more chocolatey, intense flavors, while medium roast is a mix of both. Now that we have the beans, let's look at the various ways in which we can make coffee. We will go from simple to complicated. Let's start with instant coffee, possibly the most common way in which people drink coffee around the world. Add the powder to hot water or milk and you're done. In India, we're familiar with Nescafe, Sunrise or brew. The basic idea behind an instant coffee is brew coffee, then remove water. That's it. There are two ways in which this can be done. The first method 
is spray drying. Most supermarket instant coffees in India are manufactured by the spray drying method. In this method, the roasted coffee beans are ground to a fine powder. The ground coffee is brewed with hot water, extracting all the flavor compounds from the coffee into the brew. Once the extraction is done, the brewed coffee is sprayed from the top of a tall tower. This ensures the brewed coffee forms very tiny droplets. They fall down the tower due to gravity and are met by a blast of very hot air being sent up from the bottom of the tower. Tiny droplets increase the surface area of coffee, leading to quicker heat transfer when the coffee comes in contact with hot air, leading to instant drying to a fine powder, which gets collected and then packed into sachets and bottles that we then buy. In freeze drying, the principle is the same. Coffee is brewed and then the water is removed. However, unlike the spray drying method, which involves hot air, Freeze drying involves freezing the extracted coffee and then centrifuging it, which is spinning it at very high speeds. During the centrifugation, the water crystals get separated and we are left with concentrated coffee granules. Freeze dried coffee will generally be more flavorful than spray dried coffee as heat tends to destroy a lot of the flavor molecules. You can get freeze dried instant coffee abroad and it is more expensive than spray dried instant coffee. So that is instant coffee. That's simple, least amount of effort. But let's say you want to graduate to the next level. Get a little more flavor out of your coffee. Welcome to cowboy coffee. Simply put, it's coffee made without any fancy equipment. Just take some ground coffee beans, add hot water, let it steep, filter typically with some tissue paper or napkin and done. Cowboy coffee can be strong and bold due to the long steeping time. The more time coffee spends in hot water, the more of the harsher bitter molecules that are extracted. You can also do this in slightly more fancy ways. And one such method is the pour over. You put coffee on top of a filter paper in a conical glass shape and then pour hot water in a circular motion so that the coffee bed is not disturbed as much and then let the hot water briefly extract only the top flavor notes of the coffee. This is typically used for very expensive, light roast, high-end coffee. Another very popular and practical brewing equipment is the AeroPress. It is a full immersion method, steeping finely ground coffee in hot water for a set amount of time before filtering it through a paper filter under pressure. This results in a clean cup with minimal bitterness, often described as smooth and full-bodied. Due to the short brew time and paper filtration, the AeroPress excels at highlighting the brighter, more delicate notes of high-end coffee beans. If you're someone who likes experimenting with different coffee beans from various countries for their flavors, the AeroPress is ideal for you. It's made of very durable, food-safe plastic and will last you a very, very long time. Another method is the French press. Coarsely ground coffee is steeped in hot water for a few minutes, allowing full contact for extraction. Then a plunger with a mesh filter is gently pressed down, separating the grounds from the brewed coffee. This method produces a full-bodied cup with a rich flavor profile. Because no paper is used, French press coffee can retain some of the fine grounds and essential oils resulting in a heavier mouthfeel compared to pour over or aeropress. It's ideal for showcasing medium and dark roast coffees where the bolder flavors and body can shine through without being overwhelmed by bitterness. Which then brings us to South Indian filter coffee. Traditionally, a brass or stainless filter, which has two chambers, is used. Coffee powder is packed into the top chamber and hot water is poured into it. Gravity pulls the water down and as it goes down, it extracts flavors and drips into the chamber below, which becomes your decoction. In South India, coffee powder is usually mixed with 15 to 20 percent chicory powder that lends a caramel flavor that has come to define the taste of good filter coffee. By now, you probably realize that the amount of time hot water spends with coffee and the water temperature and pressure makes a difference to the final flavor. So pour over equals low pressure, small amount of time. Aeropress and French press, some pressure, slightly more amount of time. South Indian filter, low pressure, even more time. So let's get to the next method. How can we extract more of the richer flavors without the bitterness? You use steam instead of water. And that brings us to the mocha pot. It is typically made of aluminium because aluminium heats up and cools down really fast and has three main parts. 
a lower chamber for water, a funnel shaped filter basket for the coffee grounds and an upper chamber in which the brewed coffee gets collected pouring out of the nozzle. The lower chamber is filled with water, the basket is filled with ground coffee and packed tightly and the mocha part is closed and placed on a stove top. You heat up the water in the lower chamber and it becomes steam. The lower chamber pressurizes and the steam rises up. It passes through the ground coffee, extracting the coffee in the process, condensing into liquid at the top and the brewed coffee comes out of the nozzle into the top chamber. In comparison to filter coffee, where hot water goes down because of gravity, here steam rises up at a higher pressure and this method extracts fewer of the harsher flavors in coffee. Which then brings us to espresso, Italian for express, meaning fast. This is a strong, concentrated coffee beverage. Unlike drip or filter coffee, where hot water simply saturates the grounds, espresso uses high pressure, around nine bars, to rapidly force hot water through finely ground coffee. This pressure creates a rich, concentrated brew with a bolder flavor profile. It also has a higher caffeine content per serving compared to the other methods. A properly brewed espresso will have a layer of crema on top. Crema is a light brown foamy layer created by the emulsification of coffee oils and air during the brewing process. Remember that when you use a filter, the oils are filtered out. You can, of course, enjoy the espresso as is, but more often than not, it is used as a base for other coffee drinks like cappuccino, latte, cortado, macchiato, mocha, etc. Here is a quick table of espresso-based drinks. A rather non-intuitive fact is that instant coffee and espresso drinks possess the highest amount of polyphenols and antioxidants, the really beneficial molecules in coffee compared to methods that use a filter. So if you assume instant coffee must be devoid of benefits, not true. Which then brings us to the elephant in the room, caffeine. Coffee has hundreds of highly beneficial polyphenols and antioxidants. But that's not why we drink it. We drink it because it keeps us awake and alert. That's what caffeine does. Caffeine is an alkaloid, therefore tastes bitter to our tongue and is strongly antimicrobial, which is why the plant makes it in the first place. So how does caffeine work in human beings? It mimics adenosine, a neurotransmitter that promotes feelings of tiredness. As adenosine levels increase, you feel tired and your brain gets you to relax or go to sleep. So when you drink coffee, caffeine enters the bloodstream and crosses the blood-brain barrier. Here, it binds to adenosine receptors, preventing adenosine from doing its job of making you feel drowsy. This allows stimulating neurotransmitters like dopamine and glutamate to flourish, leading to increased alertness, focus, and improved reaction time. The effects typically kick in within 30 minutes, reaching their peak within one to two hours. But it doesn't end there our body starts to metabolize it, primarily in the liver, breaking it down into other chemicals. This process takes several hours, ranging from four to six hours, depending on the individual. Genetics play a role here too, with some variations affecting how quickly our bodies metabolize caffeine. So while some people feel jittery for hours after a cup of coffee, others might experience a shorter lived buzz. There are people who can have a big hot cup of coffee and sleep like a baby, while there are some who have a cup of coffee at 4 p.m. but might still not be able to fall asleep at 10 p.m. Eventually, the body flushes out the remaining caffeine and its metabolites through urine. So to the question, how much coffee can you drink? The answer is, it depends on you. If it affects your sleep, consume less of it. According to the European Food Safety Authority, the daily consumption of caffeine by an healthy adult should not exceed 400 milligrams during the day, while a single dose of caffeine should not exceed 3 milligrams per kg of body weight. So if you're 60 kgs, don't drink anything with more than 180 milligrams of caffeine. To put things in perspective, here is a table of caffeine amounts in typical coffee drinks. But can we not remove the caffeine and drink the coffee given all the benefits of the antioxidants and polyphenols? Which brings us to decaf. Decaf coffee goes through a process to remove most of its caffeine content. There are a few methods, but they generally involve steaming the beans and using solvents or water to extract the caffeine. This process can slightly alter the flavor profile, sometimes making decaf coffee taste slightly nuttier or 
even more acidic. However, some people argue that the difference is negligible. An important point to note is that decaf does not necessarily remove all the beneficial compounds found in coffee. Many antioxidants and health benefits are preserved during decaffeination, although some are lost. Incidentally, decaffeination is a very specialized process and currently no manufacturer in India makes decaf. So it's all imported and attracts customs duty. So now let's address some coffee myths. Coffee is bad for health. Black coffee is one of the most studied beverages on the planet. Studies have established that it can help improve physical performance, reduce risk of diseases like type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and even some types of cancer. It is rich in antioxidants that help protect ourselves against the damage of free radicals. Studies have also shown that for healthy adults with no pre-existing medical conditions like hypertension, etc., up to four cups of black coffee a day maximizes benefits. This doesn't mean that you should all immediately start drinking four cups every day. Remember, it's everything other than the caffeine that is beneficial. So drink the amount that does not affect your sleep or increase your anxieties. Now, an obvious question, why did I say black coffee when most people drink with milk? The problem here is that milk adds a lot of calories to coffee. A medium cappuccino can pack 300 calories. So it's hard to isolate and study the benefits of coffee if you consume too many calories. Remember that all the beneficial effects of milk are also maxed out at one cup a day. Beyond that, it's too many calories. That said, a cup of milk coffee is absolutely fine, but if you want to drink more coffee, it's better to go black. Coffee dehydrates you. While coffee has a diuretic effect, meaning it increases urine production, moderate coffee consumption up to 400 milligrams of caffeine daily is not dehydrating. Remember, most of your coffee is still water. So relax, you'll stay hydrated. Decaf coffee is completely caffeine free. Decaf coffee has significantly less caffeine than regular coffee, but it's not entirely caffeine free. Trace amounts might still be present. Coffee is the perfect hangover cure. Coffee can make you feel more alert, but it does not break down alcohol in your system. If you're intoxicated, coffee will not sober you up. It might just mask the feeling of sluggishness temporarily. Water and time are the best ways to sober up. You should not drink coffee before bed. Partially true. While caffeine can interfere with sleep for some people, others might not experience any issues. If coffee disrupts your sleep, avoid it after late afternoon. So there you go. Now that you know how coffee works, the next time you go to a coffee shop, imagine the Maillard reaction that unlocks those magical flavors in coffee beans and the caffeine molecule tricking the adenosine receptors in your brain and keeping you alert and sharp while the rest of the polyphenols and antioxidants go to work, keeping you healthy. And remember this, when coffee was first introduced to Europe in the 17th century, coffee shops slowly replaced pubs as the place for intellectuals to meet and discuss ideas. We know what alcohol does to your brain. What coffee did is play a part in the collaborative explosion of ideas that resulted in the enlightenment and the industrial revolution that created the modern world we live in. So as you sip your mocha, Remember Baba Budan smuggling coffee beans from Yemen to Chikmagalur while Isaac Newton was inventing mathematics to describe the universe in coffee shops in Cambridge. Mm -hmm.